how much how much do you know about the franchise? Like, had you seen seasons? Did you just know about it generally? Um, I knew about it generally. Like in college, my roommates would watch it, and I was like, mm, I'm I'm above reality TV. I don't do that. <laughs> um, and then eventually, I found my way to it. I started watching Matt James' season first during COVID, and I loved it. Everything is a blessing. <laughs> And then I saw a couple of other seasons after that. I saw Michelle Young's season, Katie's season, um, and a couple after that. Yeah, so I, and I got kind of into it. Was Sam M your first kiss or was he in a lineup of other people? That I think that's just what we saw. Oh, yeah. He was my first kiss of the evening and, and the only kiss of night one. And I've seen the show. I know how it works. People are just making out left and right. And I think for me, I really just wanted to stay true to who I am. And I was conscious of the fact that when I enter relationships, it takes a lot for me to get to that level with a person. I think kissing is such an intimate thing. Um, and I needed that emotional connection before getting there. So I knew I wasn't gonna kiss that many people. I didn't know how many people I was gonna kiss, but I knew that I was gonna take a little bit more than just, um, a, hey, how are you? Let's make out. <laughs> for the first impression, Rose, I think I was just kind of thinking back to who was making me feel the most comfortable, like whose conversation was the most easiest and who did I feel like I connected with the most on night one. And I just kept thinking back to Sam at that point. And so um, I I knew I was like, if I keep thinking back to this guy, then uh, you know I'm gonna give him the rose because I think that there's potential there. And it's funny because as women, I think sometimes we're like, oh, if somebody leans in, like, I have to kiss them. And it's like, no, you you have a say over what you want to do. And it's okay to just say no. It doesn't mean that you hate them. It just means that you're not ready yet. And it's okay to let somebody know that. For some people, being the first in your field, whether, you know, sports or culinary field or whatever it might be, it, it could come with some pressure for, for some people, whether it's like first LGBT, first Asian American, first black, whatever it might be. Um, is that something you experienced at all or is that a stress that you're like, that you're just able to shake off? I absolutely experience a lot of pressure being the first Asian American bachelorette. And I think that if I didn't have that pressure or feel that pressure, that would be weird, right? Because this is a very historic moment, being the first in the in 21 seasons. And it's a moment that a lot of people have been waiting for. And it means a lot because, you know, we're working towards change and we're taking the right step in the right direction, right? And for me, you know, growing up, I never really had Asian representation in the media. I never had anyone to look up to. Um, and because of that, I really struggled with my identity and trying to figure out who I was and who I could become. You know, it's about the possibilities of where you could see yourself, but if you never saw yourself on in the media, it's like, okay, well then what now? Um, so to now kind of be able to be that role model that I was looking for when I was a kid, it, it really is surreal. And I know how many people I'm inspiring because I'm in this position now is because girls now can look at me and be like, oh, I'm just like her. Or, oh, I can relate to the fact that I'm different from this group. And mm -hmm. still I can be a main character. I can still do what I want to do and achieve the things that I want to do. And really that's kind of like the message that I would love people to take away from my journey really is that you don't have to fit any kind of a mold and that, you know, it's, I hope that they feel empowered to be different and to be unique. Representation matters, like exposure to people like yourself ma matters or exposure to people different from yourself matters too, because you want to be able to learn and grow from others that are different than you. I think there's been a lot of, I don't know the word for it, but like work in recent seasons uh, in the background of like, again, Bachelor and any other show of like diversity consultants or like um, producers and kind of working again in the background to support the cast. Is that something that you had, like whether it's a producer you were assigned to who maybe like understood your experiences or like conversations you're able to have? My team of producers that was with me through the whole time w really became my family. Like they knew me better than I knew myself by the end of it. And so they were so supportive of every, of every little, you know, Thing, thing that I had going on in my head, whether it was like, oh, like, how do I approach this conversation about 
race and culture or um, I'm feeling weird about this and that and like what do you think and like how can you kind of help me and they were all just so supportive of it and I truly felt like um, I was like a family there. I really felt so supported by everybody and we did have a specific diverse diversity and inclusion consultant as well that I could um, talk to whenever I needed if I felt like I needed a little extra help in a certain area if I just felt like I was having some concerns about anything I so yeah it was really really nice to be supported by everybody it helps mentally too you know it's just mm -hmm. like I'm a person like any other and sometimes I I need fashion advice and sometimes I need advice on like how to talk about my race and, and my culture and and yeah it was nice to really be supported yeah I think another thing you mentioned was your mom she you know practiced her English she wanted to like come across well I'm sure for you and to help you out yeah. It's the right choice. I guess, what did that mean for you? It meant so much for me, you know, for her to do something that's completely outside of her comfort zone, something that she did not want to do, um, but she did it for me. You know, that's just a mother's love. Like, I know how much she loves and supports me, and just to see her rally behind me meant so much. And I, you know, I had talked about, I really just wanted her to be her most comfortable self because I wanted people to see that we do speak by like Vietnamese at home. Like that's that's my go-to when I'm with her. And so I wanted to um, mimic like what would be real life for the two of us like on screen for people, you know? And that's what I really wanted out of it. Um, but she was like, no, I want to speak English. Um, but I, we did have a little bit of both, which was really, really great. What other conversations did you have with your family or inner circle of friends? My family was mostly really concerned about me um, getting hurt. Like they just wanted the best for me. So of course they're worried um, about me putting my heart out there on TV and, and getting my heart broken um, and them having to watch it back. So they were just really worried for me and wanted me to make the best decision for me and do the right things for me. And so they just supported me the best that they can. But obviously voiced the, um, their concerns and the fact that they were just um, worried because they care about me. I was surprised at how much I learned about myself, you know. I I feel like I went into the journey as a completely different person than I am now. Um, and I really learned to stand up for myself and stand up for what I believe is right or what I, be, what I want and what I need. And so those are the things that um, make me so happy and proud to watch this journey back is to kind of see those developments being made.